fellow problem solvers yet again john east here share like and subscribe so remember knowledge is one thing to know is one thing but to apply is completely a different story that's like knowledge versus wisdom right so today we're looking at application 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 how to solve problems with triangles and quadrilaterals stay tuned for more welcome back fellow problem solvers hope you're doing well Today we're solving some problems, you know, by using with triangles and quadrilaterals by using our knowledge with this topic. So first of all, how do we go about solving problems? So let's talk about our process, your thinking process. Remember, we are problem solvers, right? So there's a few things you need to keep in mind, right? So first of all, what is being asked? Okay, so this is what you need to know. What is being asked? You have to solve the actual problem, right? You can't solve somebody else's problem. You have to solve this one that you currently are facing. Secondly, what information do we have? That's the second thing you need to think about. So what do you observe? Look at your diagram. Now, what are the properties of your um, triangles or quadrilaterals that you have there? So what is being asked? What do we have? And then thirdly, our process. So what is being asked, like understanding the question, right? What do we have? Like think of your properties of the diagram and then the process. How do we get to the answer? And then fourthly and finally, test your answer. Okay, so in this process, what is being asked is you need to read. What do we have? You need to memorize. Think of the different types of triangles that you have. A scalene triangle, isosceles triangle, equilateral triangle, uh, different quadrilaterals, a trapezium, parallelogram, rhombus, square, rectangle, all of those, kite. You need to memorize their properties. You need to identify them the moment you see them. So that's very important. Process, this is where practice comes in. You need to practice. You need to be accurate. You need to understand what's the order of your calculations and test your answer. This is again with accuracy. So this, hopefully this will help you guys, right? How do we go about solving all of these? Now, it's one thing just to talk about it. It's an entire different thing to actually practice. And that's what this video is actually all about. So your very first example, we are going to solve the different angles now with this one there's nothing else that we have except the knowledge that it's a quadrilateral so with that comes specific properties the only property that we know of for this specific quadrilateral is the fact that the interior angles add up to 360 degrees come so we will say 2x that's angle f plus 2x minus 20 that was angle e plus x plus 5 which was angle h plus x minus 15 which was angle g and all of those add up to 360 degrees now for anything in geometry the moment you make a statement you need to give a reason so over here we will say interior angles of a quadrilateral now i'm using the shorthand version of the words Please write them out in grade 8 where you guys are at because that will help you practice um, doing it accurately. Later on you can use the short, shortcut version. So 2x plus 2x plus x plus x is equal to 6x minus 20 plus 5 minus 15 is negative 30. And on the right hand side, we still have 360 degrees. Now we are adding 30 on both sides, the left hand side and the right hand side, so that we can get rid of this negative 30. So then we'll have a 6x equals 390. Okay, so once we've got this, we need to solve for x, right? So the next step is to say, okay, we are going to divide by 6 on both sides therefore x is equal to 65 degrees so you would have seen we thinking of the process again 
we read what is being asked. Now over here, I voiced it that we just want to solve for x. What do we have? We've got a quadrilateral, so we knew its properties. We went through the process of our calculation and we checked we've done it accurately. Okay, next example, example two. We again just going to solve for C, which is the unknown, or for E and D. Now let's have a look at what is given. Uh, remember, this is not drawn according to scale. We can see there we've got corresponding or you know, opposite sides being equal in both cases. So this tells us it's a parallelogram. That's a property for parallelogram, but we cannot say anything regarding uh, anything specific. We can't say there's a right angle or anything like that. But what we do know with parallelograms is opposite interior angles are equal. So first of all, we'll be able to make a statement by saying 2C minus 27 is equal to C plus 26. And then we say opposite angles of a parallelogram. Remember, write it out fully, please. Okay, so that means we will take the C to the left-hand side. So 2C minus C will be equal to 26 plus the 27. We brought the 27 across to the right by adding 27 on both sides. And then we brought the C to the left by subtracting it on both sides. So 2C minus C is just equal to C. 26 plus 27 is equal to 53. Okay, so we've solved for C. Again, over here, we know that E and D will be equal. So that's something else we can write down. We can say E is equal to D with the same reason. But then we need to figure out what is this angle or this one. Both of them has to be the same. We know angle V is C plus 26. C is 53. So 53 plus 26 is equal to 79. Okay, so just to help you understand where we're at. Technically, if you would draw this in, in um, keeping its properties in mind, it will look more like this. So if we can get this angle, then we can use co-interior angles because we've got parallel lines. Remember, it's a parallelogram. So we know this angle is equal to 79. So that makes this angle equal to 101. So how do we write this? Okay, so first of all, we would say angle V is equal to C plus 26 which is equal to 53 plus 26 is equal to 79. Then we'll make a statement and say, therefore, angle D is equal to 101. And our reason would be co-interior angles. Remember, this is part of those fun reasons. So co-interior, we can't just say co-interior angles. We have to say which lines are parallel. And we know TU is parallel to WV because it's a parallelogram. And this automatically then means E is also equal to 101 by using the same reason. So this was our third example. Now our very last example, example three, uh, we will be working with just solving for X in this case. Okay, so we've got angle P right there. We've got angle Q right here. We've got angle R. Now we are going to use our knowledge with triangles and exterior angles of a triangle. So we know that angle R, which is 6x minus 27, is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. And that's part of our properties with triangles. So we need to know the properties, right? So it's equal to 2x plus 6 plus 3x minus 9. And our reason would be? exterior angles of a triangle so write it out please let's see okay 6x we've got a 2x and a 3x on the right hand side so we're bringing all the x's to the left so it will be 6x minus 2x 
minus 3x. So we did that by subtracting 2x and 3x on both sides. Then on the right hand side we've got a 6 minus 9. And then we bring in the negative 27 across by adding 27 on both sides. So on the left hand side we'll just end up with an x. On the right hand side we've got a 6 minus 9 plus 27. So that adds up to 24. So this is how we got to our final answer. So remember, we need to read, we need to understand the question, we need to memorize our properties so that we can use them in calculations like we did here. And then thirdly, we need to understand the process. How do we get to this? So first of all, we make a, a statement and a reason, and then our calculations we did with accuracy until we got to the final answer. Hopefully this will help you. Have a lovely day.